But before we have a final thank you to all the singers and we introduce you to the wine at the back of the room, the manuscript at the front of the room, I'm going to invite up some people who will give you just a little picture and picture backdrop on how this manuscript got digitized and also a bit more about the manuscript itself. So save your questions. You can talk to Anne-Marie over drinks and the, at the back and the manuscript at the front. But here I'm going to cede the floor to Anne-Marie, the medieval manuscript curator, and Greg Houston from the digitization team. Um, I don't have a clicker, so I might be saying slide every few seconds, but that's okay. Um, my name is Greg Houston, and I work in digital initiatives. I supervise the work in the digitization lab. And as Dean Cook mentioned, it took a lot of work to bring these very rare manuscripts to light, not only through Anne-Marie's uh, research efforts, but also through an extensive digitization project that was completed just a few weeks ago. This beautiful large chant book is now available to read online, and the rest of the selection slide, will soon be available for all the world to see. This will include four more codices and 43 large folio leaves and fragments. I would like to take a few minutes to talk about the digitization effort and specifically about capturing this manuscript, MS-73, the largest manuscript that we've ever digitized in the lab. Before I start, however, I would like to take a moment to thank Dean Cook for supporting digitization in the McGill Library. With her help and direction, we have acquired the specialized equipment that has enabled the in-house digitization lab to capture these magnificent and rare items. Now at first sight, if you can switch, MS-73 is a sight to behold and might be intimidating to even the most professional photographer. It is amazing to realize that this book is 600 years old, with over 145 leaves, or 300 parchment pages, protruding brass bosses, and bound with heavy wood boards and leather, this manuscript looks like a prop from Game of Thrones. <laughs> this item, unlike anything we've digitized before, put on our, on our new large scanner, the Quartz Super Scan, it really put it to the test. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our scanner to see how this was actually digitized. Slide. So this scanner was purchased in 2017 and it allows us to digitize rare and fragile items from overhead. Only two other institutions in Quebec own a similar machine. They are the Canadian Centre for Architecture and the BANQ. With an optical resolution, slide, of uh, between a 600 and 1,000 ppi, this machine is ideal for scanning music scores. Music scores require a minimum of 600 ppi resolution to capture the finer details such as music glyphs and characters. Now that is an actual uh, representation size of what you see on the right, to actual scale. Slide. It can also capture images at one-to-one -one ratio, which is important for maintaining size accuracy, especially if you wish to make a print reproduction and a perfect one-to-one -one facsimile of the original. That's actually uh, some, that's an architecture plan, and you can see the printout matches the original exactly. So it'd be very interesting, actually, if we wanted to reproduce that book exactly. Other uh, slide, please. Other important features include the relief enhancement and the anti-glare function. Now this scanner has two lateral lights fixed onto one spot. The relief enhancement allows us to shut off one of the lateral lights which makes 3D elements such as the brass fixtures in the book stand out. If you go to the next slide you'll see. The anti-glare function, if you can switch to the next slide, was particularly helpful when we digitized a selection of framed leaves. We were able to photograph through glass, and we can also photograph through plastic sleeves, because the lights are focused on one spot and we're not relying on copy stand lights on either side, which can cast reflections and shadows. Next slide. The Quartz Super Scan is used primarily to scan architectural drawings, rare maps, artwork, framed pictures, and other large flat format items. However, with our customized setup and a little care and patience, we were able to create a makeshift cradle under the camera to support this massive folio. Next slide. The goal was to support the weight of the manuscript, but also keep the pages as flat as possible. What you don't see is we actually pulled out the table and we were able to set up that cradle right under the camera. 
We wanted to capture the pages with the least amount of curvature to avoid distorting the text. Carefully placed sandbags and weighted beads were also used to help flatten the pages. Next slide. Uh, that, you know, pages that were slightly warped. And each page was delicately turned one by one and took an average of two to three minutes per open face. Once the digitization was complete, we did a final quality control to make sure everything was captured. These are un unnumbered pages after all, so we have to do a, vis a visible cross-check between the digital and the real item. The last step, if you can switch the slide, was uploading a PDF into our repository and adding a catalog record for the electronic copy. Now if you go to those links below, it will bring you to the electronic copy. Um, I don't know if you can click maybe... The, or, yeah, that one. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, you, and you can view this item in our second repository at archive.org as a page turner. And you can download a complete sequence of the single page files. So we, we invite you to keep an eye on our collections as we start to upload the rest of the manuscripts. And we really do enjoy your feedback. Thank you very much. collaboration over all of these years and we've done some spectacular projects. I would say that this one is a full project. Um, as you see it's a multidisciplinary -dis type project. Um, so it comes from the text, it comes from the aesthetics, um, it comes from history and um, we're very proud to be doing this with uh, the team. Um, we just want to situate a bit more the, the manuscript. So it's a 15th century Italian medieval manuscript from northern Italy, and a monastery is soon to be hopefully identified um, with Julie and her team. There are some hints at that. Um, the, the manuscript in this case, as you can see, is embellished with several large decorated initials using certain inks and compositions of color, which refers to northern Italy manners, the smaller initials in red and blue ink are decorated with characteristic pen flourishes and tendrils in blue and or red ink. You've seen some of the examples go by, so um, these characteristics are all important, as is the binding, for instance. Um, I wanted to give you maybe just a notion of how did McGill get this manuscript. It's uh, one of the most uh, frequently asked questions uh, we get on many of our collections. This one was obtained in Florence by Dr. Casey Wood on November 5th, 1930, from a firm dealing in antiquarian objects. It was added soon thereafter to the McGill Library collection on the 21st of January 1931, according to our accession records. Uh, the purchase cost seems to have translated into $250, uh, according again to our records. Today these items would command a price upwards of 80000 and much, much more for full um, objects of this size. So through acquisition and many famous McGill benefactors, um, we are very fortunate to have such a strong medieval collection. Um, some of the other um, Montrealers who contributed funds and donations to the Medi McGill medieval collection would be uh, Cleveland Morgan, Amy Lady Roddick, and Miss Mabel Molson, Francis McLennan. Uh, we are fortunate to have had their support in our institutional collection history. Rare Books and Special Collections of the McGill Library now possesses one of the most comprehensive collections in a university library in Canada with well over 200 medieval era manuscripts from Western Europe. They are complemented by groups of early Greek manuscripts and some he Hebrew manuscripts, several legal and historical documents um, to be explored further. Uh, so this Chant Manuscript, MS-073, due to its completeness and its clear medieval aspect, is one of the highlights of the McGill Medieval Manuscript Collection. Uh, we've learned that now we have 50, and they constitute a real area of specialization and represent an important component to the overall manuscript collection. We are happy that this has reached the ears of Julie Cumming, uh, and here at the music faculty to work with um, all of these um, 
very talented scholars and uh, obviously music musicians, we hope to make more of the aspects of these objects uh, known, make them more visible and discoverable. Thank you.